again. Okay, so now we're going to finish where we left off. I know I was telling you guys about how Mitt Romney was talking about um, I, I like being able to fire people, Mitt Romney was talking about. Uh, uh, no, listen. I, I understand the context of how he meant it. Co Mitt Romney, when we get upset when you say things like that, it's not about what you said. It's about, first of all, it's that you said it and the way you said it, how you said it. You said it with a smile on your face. First of all, you formed your lips to say it. Then you said it with a smile on your face. It tells us about the psychology of where you're coming from. Okay? It says that you, somewhere inside of yourself, get some type of pleasure of a profiting off of other people's pain. And even if you weren't born like that, you have become like that. Okay? Even if you were a goldfish when you were a little kid, you're a shark now. Okay, and we see it in you. It's like we don't know who you are, but we know you're that. Okay, we know we see that that part of you, that dimension. Okay, so it's not it's not about that you were saying I like being able to fire people in another context. It's about how you said it, the psychology that we know where your head is at. Okay, and we know that if you got into office and became our president, you would like to fire some of us. And we live we we live here. We're citizens of this country. Okay, so we can't deal with all of that. You know. You know, mess. We had Bush. We're not going. We're not going to have you on top of Bush. And Bush already let Cheney run the country, so we're not going to. We're not going to go there. We're not going to go there. Okay. We've had enough problems. Okay. We're we're stressed out. We're tired. We're exhausted. We need a break. Okay. We need a break. So we need Obama to just finish his job. Okay. So stop trying to relate to us, Mitt. It's not working. Okay. You're just making things worse. All right. And just stop lying if you can, which I don't think you can. But I mean, it's just I get so offended. You lie so much. It's like it's like you were calling me stupid. When you lie to me, it's like you're calling me stupid because it's like I, I know you're lying to me. So stop. <laughs> but anyway, um, just you know, like I said, you know, I don't know anybody who lies like this. You know, you lie like a rug, and your name ain't Doug Mitt Romney. But listen, Obama, he doesn't lie like that. He's not a pathological liar who switches gears mid sentence. Okay, he's. He's not a, a born pampered Wall Street shark who likes being able to fire people. Okay, he's not a, a money worshiping, egomaniacal control freak who will say and do anything just to win because you you think you're entitled to it, like you do, Mitt Romney. Okay, Obama, he tells the truth, stays very consistent. You can fact check him on this too. I am telling you the truth. He tells the truth, stays very consistent. He keeps almost all the promises he makes to us, which is more than I can say for almost any president, because it's hard to keep promises that you make when you you have all these other people that you have to depend on to help make those promises come true. You know. You, but you check his record and compare it to Mitt Romney's. There's no comparison. None. Zero. Okay? And Obama wasn't born rich like Romney. He was born into a real working class family just like the rest of us. He's a self-made man who pulled himself up by his bootstraps using his mind. And he was a leader in his community before he got into politics. Alright? In addition to giving us all tax breaks, more student loans, and all that other stuff, you know. He's just... He's a good person, and he's doing his best. He's trying to help us, okay? He just he thought that he could get more humanity out of the Republicans than it currently exists inside of them. So I, you know, I will say that was he didn't under he did not know that the Republicans were going to be as bitchy as they are. Excuse my French, but I mean that's a bitchy move. So you know he thought they were going to be decent human beings. They weren't, but he's learned now. He knows that they're not going to be decent human beings, and they shot themselves in the foot because he he you know he gave them seventy five percent. He he did his best to compromise with them. They would never play ball. But once he gets reelected, it's all like Donkey Kong. Yeah, just, you guys had your chance. You screwed us. All, all of us. You screwed us all over. And Obama, you tried to screw him over when he was trying to help you guys out. Once he's reelected, you got nothing. All right? He's going to go over your heads every single day. Okay? So anyway, um... Um, Romney was a rich, privileged uh, job killer in all of our communities before he went into politics. And then he turns around and talks about Obama being out of touch with the people. <laughs> really? Romney? No. You're the one who's out of touch, honey. Okay, you. But, you know, you're just a chameleon -air. Yes, we made a word. chameleon Because you're a chameleon and a millionaire. The 1% chameleon uh, millionaire. We, we call you that because calling you a joke just wasn't descriptive enough. You are Pinocchio in the Emperor's New Clothes, who was born into money and spent his whole adult life profiting off of other people's pain. And I just, you know, we know who you are, okay? Which is <laughs> funny, since you don't seem to. But um, you can't buy us, okay? Romney, you just can't buy us. I don't know if that surprises you, but you can't buy your way to the presidency either. And if your daddy didn't tell you that when you were growing up, well, guess what? November 6th, we will. So that's what we're going to do. 
Um, now, to everybody else, I'm a swing voters. I just gotta get this out. Uh, I want to give you a little story. It's not really a story. It's kind of like a summary. But um, uh, this isn't private school. But I know a private school good old boy when I see one. All right, because I grew up in private school. And true story. Didn't like it so much. Uh, Want to know why? Because of people like Mitt Romney. Uh, arrogant, dishonest, spoiled brats are born into loveless privilege with silver spoons in their mouths, thinking they're above the law, can walk all over the necks of normal people just because of daddy's wallet, and buy their way into and out of every situation they want, free of consequence, free of understanding, free of humanity, pasting on fake charm and phony smiles, condescendingly thinking that everyone <laughs> was too dumb to see through their sociopathic facades. Even playing sports, games, and competitions deceitfully, cheating others out of what was rightfully theirs with no sportsmanship, no character, no loyalty whatsoever, simply because they had more money than the 99% who worked for and earned theirs. So they are they always knew their money would get them out of anything, even murder, even rape, because green paper was their god of worship. Well, Mitt Romney, that's when I first learned exactly who I didn't want to be like when I grew up. You. Because green paper is your god of worship, Romney. That's why being a cold, untrustworthy, pathological liar who gets rich at the expense of working class people doesn't stop you from sleeping at night. But it will stop you from being my president. Because to you, Mitt Romney, all we are is another one of your business deals. But my life doesn't have a price tag on it. It's worth more than $300 million dollar piggy bank. Uh, you know, yeah, some of us know how much you're worth. And it means nothing to us, because you can't buy us with your limitless million dollar ads littered with all your different fake, phony, changing faces and obvious lies. So people, we can't have a president but Romney. It just, I don't even like the way that sounds. Just President Romney, does that even sound right to you? It doesn't even, no offense to all the Romneys out there, but it just doesn't sound like a president to me. It just doesn't sound presidential. But look, y'all, let me level with you again. We gave the Republicans eight years to screw up our country. It's not fair to then expect the Democrats to fix it before. Okay, that's not right, in my opinion. Okay, and I am a conservative independent. Okay, I, I mean... Technically, I have a lot more Republican in me in terms of the social values thing than I do Democrat, okay? But even I am a, even I get this, okay? We gave eight years to the party of the 1% to destroy our economy and education. I just think that we owe it to ourselves and our country and the Dems, the other side, to give them the same amount of time to fix our mess, okay? Uh, you know, the, that we gave Republicans, you know, we gave the Republicans that much time to fix our, to make the mess, so we should give the Democrats at least the same amount of time to fix it, if not more. Bush got eight years to sink the ship, we should give Obama eight years to save it. Besides, Obama has accomplished way more in four years than Bush did in eight anyway. So I say no, we're not going to give the mantle of power back to the same people who put us in the situation we're in. It's not, just not going to happen. I just want you guys, you swing voters out there like me, to know this and think about this when you go to vote. Don't let them fool you. Just don't let them fool you. They don't have souls. They're lacking souls. They, you don't vote for the people who don't have souls. It's just not a good idea. Okay? All right? You just don't do it. That's my suggestion. Okay? Mitt Romney, I don't care how rich you are. My soul is not for sale. My life is not for sale. My family is not for sale. And my vote is not for sale. But I do know who I am voting for on Tuesday, November 6, 2012. I'll give you a hint. He killed Osama bin Laden. Ha! La, 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 la. So Mitt Romney, <laughs> you can take it easy, chameleon air. Call us when you get a heartbeat, or a heart, or a soul, or anything human. Uh, to all you Republican evangelicals out there, you know, I'm not saying anything here, but just, uh, just to put it out there, you know, Jesus was a community organizer, and Pontius Pilate was a governor. So which would you rather have as president, the community organizer or the governor? I say community organizer Obama is a better servant of the people than Governor Romney. I'm just saying. So my fellow swing voters, just vote for Obama, even if you don't know what's going on, or you're upset about the pace of things, he needs more time to fix what the other party screwed up. Okay, would you rather things get worse, or just take time to get better? Because that's really the two choices we have right now. Either vote for Romney and things will get worse, much worse, at a much rapid, much faster pace, or vote for Obama and things will continue to get, continue to get better, but with time. You know, so give him the time he needs to finish the job. That's what I'm gonna. That's what I'm gonna do. Okay, because unlike the party of the one percent, he actually cares about us. Obama cares about you. That's about it. I am the ninety-nine percent, and I approve this message. Doses. <laughs> oh, yeah, read this. <laughs> what race or ethnicity we were, we were united as one American family. We were also united in our resolve. And the beginning to bring those who committed this vicious attack to justice.
Clinton quickly learned that the 9 11 attacks were carried out by Al Qaeda, an organization headed by Osama bin Laden, which had openly declared war on the United States and was committed to killing innocents in our country and around the globe. So we went to war against Al Qaeda to protect our citizens, our friends, and our allies. Over the last 10 years, thanks to the tireless and the war work of our military and our counterterrorism professionals, we've made great strides in that effort. We've disrupted terrorist attacks and strengthened our homeland defense.